lesson. This lesson is for Sunday, May 29th, 2022. And the title of today's lesson is Peter in Prison. So for the month of May, we've been learning about the ministry of Peter. So we started talking about Peter um, in time uh, right after Jesus went up into heaven. And um, then when the Holy Spirit came, Peter um, received the power and he was able to heal people. We learned about how he healed a lame man who couldn't walk and then the man could walk. And then he even brought a woman named Tabitha back to life. She was dead, had gotten sick and died. And when Peter came and prayed, um, he was able to bring her back to life. And then last year, uh, last week, we talked about how Peter met a Roman soldier named Cornelius. And he, uh, both Cornelius and Peter had visions. Um, Cornelius's vision told him to send soldiers to get Peter. And when Peter had a vision um, of different kind of animals um, that were considered unclean to the Jewish people, um, but the voice of God told him that he was not to call anything unclean that God had made clean. And what God was talking about was people who were not Jewish people were also to be considered um, part of God's family. So our Bible verse for the month of May has to do with Peter. And this is from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. And it says, I tell you that you are Peter, and I'll build my church on this rock. And that's Jesus speaking there. And he's telling Peter that um, the beginning of the church after Jesus went to heaven um, was kind of based at, at the beginning on Peter's ministry and that Peter was going to be an important person in building up the church. Here's our lesson here. So as always, I'm using the Deep Blue Kids One Room Sunday School curriculum published by Abingdon Press, and that's where I'm getting the material for my weekly uh, lesson, as well as for the uh, downloads that you get in my weekly email. So we, I just mentioned how Peter had healed a few people, and then he was starting to spread um, the gospel outside of Jerusalem. He had gone to Joppa, which is where he healed Tabitha, and um, he also met Cornelius, and this is a city that's farther away from Jerusalem um, along the coastline of Israel. And so over time, the church has been spreading. Peter and the other disciples have been telling all about Jesus, and um, they've been healing people. And eventually, the Jewish leaders had enough of that. Um, and so that has to do with our story today, and it's called Peter in Prison. Today, I'm going to be reading it from the download that you'll be getting in this week's email. And this is a version that's a little bit easier for kids to understand. So King Herod, and this is the, um, he was actually um, a Jewish king um, that the Romans had put in charge of Israel. King Herod put some of Jesus's followers in jail. He planned to give Jesus's followers lots of trouble. He had James killed with a sword. James was Jesus's brother and the leader of the church in Jerusalem. The Jewish people were glad that James was killed. So Herod arrested Peter too and put him in jail. Herod sent four groups of guards to watch Peter. Each group had four men in it. So that's a lot of guards for one person who's already in jail. Herod's plan was to judge Peter after the Passover, but Jesus's followers were praying hard for Peter. The night before Herod was going to judge Peter publicly, Peter was sleeping in jail. One guard was sleeping beside Peter on his right and another on his left. Peter was chained between them. There were also guards at the door. So remember, there's four guards. So one on each side of Peter and two guards at the door. So that's a lot of guys. And he's chained up. So I don't think he's supposed to be going anywhere. But suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone into the prison cell. The angel tapped Peter on his side and woke him up. Quick, said the angel, get up. Peter's chains fell off his wrists. Put your clothes on, said the angel. Put your sandals on. So Peter did what he was told. Put on your coat and follow me, said the angel. Peter followed the angel out of prison. But Peter thought he was dreaming. He didn't know it was really happening. They walked past a first guard. They passed a second guard. When they came to an iron gate that led to the city, it opened by itself. They walked through the gate and down one street. Then the angel left. 
Then Peter knew that he wasn't dreaming. The Lord sent his angel, said Peter. He saved me. Peter went to the house where many believers had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked on the outward gate. A servant girl named Rhoda came to the gate. She recognized Peter's voice. She was so happy she forgot to open the gate. She just leaves Peter outside. Rhoda ran back inside to the others and announced, Peter is at the gate. You're crazy, they said. But Rhoda promised. Maybe it's an angel, she, they said. Meanwhile, Peter kept knocking at the gate. He's still outside knocking on the door. At last, they opened the door and saw that it really was Peter. They were very, very astonished. Peter held his hand up to quiet them. Then he told them how the angel from the Lord had led him out of prison. So this is really an amazing story, another miracle. So there were lots of miracles. Um, Peter had the ability to heal people and raise people from the dead. Um, and in this case, um, he was in prison and we are pretty sure that he probably would have been sentenced to death or at least a severe um, punishment that already killed James. And so Peter was probably expecting that he was going to die too, but it was not his time. And so God even sent an angel, even though they had all those guards, um, they were pretty much asleep. The angel released him, um, even took the chains off, opened the gates and returned him to the followers. And part of the reason was because they had been praying for him. And, of course, God decided that it was not Peter's time. Peter still had some work uh, to do for Jesus. Eventually, um, we know that Peter did end up um, getting crucified like Jesus. Um, actually, he asked to be crucified upside down um, because he felt that being crucified the same way Jesus was wasn't even good enough for him. But that was several years later, um, and Peter still had some work to do. Um, so we can see here that P uh, prayers made a difference um, in saving uh, Peter's life. And we can remember, too, that sometimes things may be difficult, things may seem hard, um, but we can always pray, and then we have to trust Jesus. Um, in your download, you're going to get this picture of our praying hand. And we can use our hand to help us remember to pray. So we have our five fingers. So with our thumb, that reminds us we can't pray for ourselves. So you can think of, you know, pointing to yourself. With our pointer finger, the people who point you to Christ. So that would be your church um, members, your church teachers, your pastor, other people like that, your family members. With a tall finger, it says your leaders. So that would be anyone you would consider in a leadership position. So your teachers, um, and of course the leaders of our city, our state, our country, those are people that we should be praying for because they um, make decisions. Um, for your ring finger here, um, that's for your family, and that's because it's on your ring. And of course we wear a ring um, to show our love for our family. And then for our pinky finger, our small finger, there, uh, the people who are sick or weak. And so because this is not a strong finger, it's to remind us um, to pray for people who are sick. Um, so we can always pray for ourselves. God says that we can, things that we need, um, people that point us to Christ as our church leaders, um, our other leaders, our family, and then for the sick. So that's a way to re help us remember um, people that we can be praying for. Um, and we can remember that God took care of Peter while he was in prison, and he takes care for us as well. We have to remember God is always good. And so even when he brings tough things into our life, like Peter was in prison, or there may be other things in your life that you may find that are tough, we can remember that God is always good and that he will care for us. Um, it may not always be the way we think he will, but we have to always remember whatever happens, that God always has a plan and a good purpose in mind. Now, we have several things um, in our lesson today. Also, in your downloads, you'll get this page, which is a vanishing uh, reflection. And so you can take a piece of foil, and when it is flat, just out of the box, when you look at it, you can kind of see a reflection. Kind of. And then when you crumple it up and open it up, it's harder to see our reflection. So when I look in it here, I can't see myself at all. And then if we try to smooth it out, and you can put it on a hard surface and use your fingernail to kind of 
straighten it out. Then you can see a reflection a little bit better in here. And this has to do with light. Light travels in a straight line. And when the, paint, the foil is flat, it can bounce off that and it acts like a mirror. But when we scrunch up the foil, the light is reflected. But now, because of all these little bends and folds and angles in our foil, the light goes off in all different directions and it's hard to see our reflection. When we rub it flat again, then that cuts down some of those little angles and makes the, the mirror image come out a little bit better as well. Now, the point of this, our reflection can kind of vanish, just like Peter vanished um, as well. And this is not really a miracle, like the miracle for Peter, but it's something that's kind of an interesting thing to do. Another thing we can do, um, you'll get in your download page here. This is a little page that we can color, and then you can um, punch holes in those circles. And then I did that here. I didn't color it, but I did punch the holes. I did actually have to trim off the top and the bottom because my hole punch didn't reach up high enough before I trimmed it. So I did trim it down. And then you can take a piece of yarn. Um, you want to cut it about uh, one yard, which is three feet or 36 inches. And then you can run it through. I'm going to put it through here. Hold on the back and then I'm going to run it through here and we're going to make the bars in prison here so it's like a little sewing page here so I'm going to pull it tight there so that's one bar and then on the back you can just do it the short way here like that and then you can turn it over now I've got another bar I'm going to pull that all the way through and then you can do that all the way across your paper. And now we've got the bars uh, for Peter in prison. On the back side, you can, oops, that just fell out. You could just put a little bit of tape. Put that through. So a little piece of tape. You can tape it on the back. And then your yarn. There, then your yarn won't go through and then you can continue it all the way across. So that's a way to remind us of Peter um, in prison. And the last thing we got, this week we have a lot of crafts. Some weeks there aren't any and this week we've got a bunch. We've got a little wheel here for Peter's journey. So this is, has some little pictures on it from the four stories we learned from Peter. So we've got um, this week's story where the angel if I can point to the right one here, where the angel released him from prison. Last week, we have Peter with the vision about the unclean animals. We've got Peter healing Tabitha here and then healing the blind man. So you can color these and remember color first before you cut. That makes it much easier. And then once you have your two pages, you're going to put the Peter's journey on top of the other one. And then you just put a brad through the middle. And then when you twist it, you can see turn the right way here. To do it backwards this way. You can see the four scenes um, from Peter's story in the book of Acts. So then we've got oh, he's turning out the wrong way. There we go. There's Peter and the layman, and so on. So this is a way we can remember the stories for Peter. Um, and I didn't color the whole thing, but um, you can color that as well. And that'll help you remember the story of Peter. All right, well, let's pray. Dear God, remind us to pray every day. Help us to remember to pray faithfully for other people. Father, I just thank you for the life of Peter. And I thank you for all the lessons that we can learn from him about how um, you can take care of us. Um, and how prayers really can help people when they are in need. I ask your blessing on each of these children and families watching this video today. In your name I pray, amen. So thank you so much for watching my video. Remember, you can always email me at kids at mgucc.org if you would like to get on my weekly email list. Or if you have a question or prayer request, please shoot that to me. If you're watching on YouTube, you can make sure to like our Mountain View Kids Fontana YouTube page. Or if you're watching on Facebook, make sure you like our Mountain View Community Church Montana Facebook page, and that way you can catch these videos every week. So have a blessed week. Bye-bye.